about how life started on Earth. This is definitely a highly debated topic, and it's also one that a lot of people don't really know too much about. So we're going to talk about how that whole process actually happened. Um, so one thing that people need to realize is, yes, Earth was crazy when the Earth first, you know, became to be, um, but there, and there were a lot of, like, geologic events happening. But the other thing you want to remember is that life actually changed Earth as well. Look at us right now with all of our global warming and carbon emissions, right? We're changing Earth. And so there was a lot of organisms on Earth that actually changed it back then, too. So we're going to talk about that and how it works. Big thing was going to be photosynthetic organisms producing enough oxygen to give us our atmosphere. Sphere. So um, it's thought that life started on Earth about 3.5 to 4 billion years ago. Um, the crazy thing is that for a long time, the only life on Earth were, you know, bacteria. Um, planet Earth is thought to be about 4.6 billion years old. And so this is stuff that they have used carbon dating to figure out, um, absolute dating, um, that type of stuff. So the reason they think that Earth had life on it about 3.5 to 4 billion years ago is because they have actually found fossils of these bacteria in Australia that are about that old. So prokaryotes were pretty much by themselves, the bacteria, for a billion and a half years. It's a pretty long time. Um, but very, very early on, what was going to happen is bacteria and archaea bacteria branched apart. So um, remember, they're both prokaryotes, but it's thought that archaea bacteria is actually more similar to eukaryotes than they are to other bacteria, which is kind of interesting. So a lot of people ask, where do you find fossils of bacteria? <laughs> and so there's going to be two sources where they have um, found a lot of them, actually. Um, the first one is going to be these guys that you see in this picture here called stromatolites. And what these are is these um, microbial mats that kind of form, and then another one grows on top of them, and so on and so on, and they basically compact until they become rock. Um, so if you actually look at this picture, here's some stromatolites here, and they've actually cut through them so you can actually see all of those layers right there. Another place where they've found them are going to be around hydrothermal vents. So those are in the really, really deep ocean, and they're almost like an underwater volcano, and um, they found a lot of bacterial um, fossils down there as well. Okay, so... Big things. What we're going to do is kind of go through big, big milestones that happen in the evolution of life on Earth. So one big thing that started happening about 2.7 billion years ago is oxygen started accumulating. So the way that they know this, which I think is kind of interesting, is if they look at rocks from about that time that have iron in them, they are bright red because they rusted, basically. So I have a picture of that, too, that you can kind of see... Um, Doot, doot, hydrothermal vents, yeah. So you can see this rock here that was about, um, that they're talking about, and you can see those bright red bands, right? So um, that was oxidation. So that means there was presence of oxygen. So they've looked back to find the oldest rocks that have that oxidation, and they're about 2.7 billion years old. So I think that's super cool. Um, okay. Now, what's pretty interesting is the oxygen accumulation was pretty gradual, but then there wasn't a lot of stuff eating that oxygen up. So it actually got really, 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 really high, and it actually killed off a lot of organisms. Because as I'm sure you know, too much oxygen can kill you, right? And so that's exactly what happened here, is they produced too much, not enough things were eating it up, and so it actually caused them to die. So there was a mass die-off that happened then. Then, about 2.1 billion years ago is when eukaryotes came to be. So the way that they think that happened is through a process that's called endosymbiosis. So endo means within, symbiosis means living together. So literally what they think happened was that you had your original um, ancestral bacterial cell and then another bacterial cell started living within it. And that's how we got a lot of our organelles. Now as far as, so if you think about like um, uh, chloroplasts and mitochondria, that's how they think those came to be. As far as things that are made of a lot of um, membrane material, like the ER and um, the Golgi apparatus and that type of stuff, they think that the cell just kind of folded in on itself, as you see here, and that's how you got those organelles. So that's how they actually think eukaryotes came onto the scene. Okay, 
So there was a lot of unicellular eukaryotes, which we call the protists, and you're going to learn about those in class. And then what happened was there's, there was a severe ice age, right? And so um, they think that that kind of limited the diversity of these guys and didn't let them kind of explode and like just kind of evolve like crazy. The places where they actually found that they did the best during this ice age was going to be those deep sea vents because it's nice and hot there um, and near hot springs, right? Because once again, it's nice and hot there with geothermal heat. And then a, lot of, a couple of locations where they think enough ice melted for sunlight to penetrate the, the ocean waters. So kind of interesting there. Then we had animal diversity go crazy during what's called the Cambrian explosion, right? Um, the first organisms that they think came to be were going to be jellyfish, or we should call them jellies to be appropriate. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I thought I had a picture of that, and I don't. Um, and sponges. So jellies and sponges were thought to be the first animals, sponges first, um, in some ways that people think. Um, and then that's when we kind of had this big explosion after that where we had lots and lots of different types of animals come to be. Okay, so in the next part, we'll talk about how plants came onto land.